production of the students at Morristown High School organized as Morristown Educational Television and WJSV News. I'm pleased to have as my guest today, Mrs. Mary Ann Red, Crowd, Red, Red Cloud Laner. She's a full-blooded Sioux Indian. Miss Laner, where were you born? I was born and raised on the uh, Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in Pine Ridge, South Dakota. What was life like on that on that plantation? Is it? I, I imagine it's very different from life here in Whippany, where you live. Well, it's a, a life of uh, it's 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 like stepping into a different world because yeah. you have different values, different uh, things to grow up by, and, and schooling and uh, all this type of that we we're used to now is is completely different in uh, the philosophy of life and everything. It's a complete turnaround for me to be living here now. Yeah, I'll have to talk about the philosophy and all that a, a little bit later on in today's show. I understand your grandfather was a famous Indian. Yes. Uh, your great-grandfather, excuse me, right? Yes, ma and uh, he was the, uh, er, in the beginning, he wanted to uh, conquer the uh, people that were coming in, and later on, he came to um, Washington and to New York and then found out, s seeing the multitudes, the population, right. and went home and uh, told his people that uh, the best way to uh, live in the world, the new society that's coming in, is to uh, educate themselves and uh, get, get in, with, in, in with the society. And the best way to do that was to uh, uh, take the best of our values and right. then take the best of the values of the other and put them together and make a life for themselves. Oh, that's pretty interesting. This is, you mean he came into New York and then returned back to South Dakota, was it? Yes. And then? Hmm. The, the, the main reason they brought him down here was to show him the military might of the government and they took him to military in installations where the uh, all in power was so to give him the idea that <laughs> he shouldn't fight anymore. Right, right. Um, did he go ahead and instill these values, his new values, in the people, in the Sioux Indians? Yes, he did, and uh, he was a man before his time, and uh, he saw the uh, that it will take quite a while for our people to adjust to the society that is coming. So he uh, made a treaty with the United States government, and in that treaty it says that the uh, our people should be taken care of for seven generations. And by seven generations, they would be ready to, able to handle and be able to live in a society that we know now. And I'm the fifth generation, so we've got two more generations to go before wow. the treaty is fulfilled. And uh, we are getting our people educated and going on to colleges as uh, the way he pictured it to be. And that was his only solution to uh, ever making a life. Otherwise, uh, he put on uh, reservations and then eventually just out of neglect die out and be a nation that's gone for you know gone forever. Did the government fulfill its promises in the treaty? Uh, not for f fully. Uh, to some extent they have, but uh, uh, overall I would say 80% uh, of it hasn't been done. And what they have tried to do is. Uh, uh, put in schooling and all this, but uh, not this kind of schooling that we know here. And we tried to do the best we could uh, with what we have. And uh, as far as the uh, Bureau of Indian Affairs, which controls the American Indians' lives, uh, has to be put in a different department because we're in originally with the War Department. And uh, with that, being the case, we, we never seem to get to uh, have things that we want and what the government set out, the, the money that's allocated for American Indians are used for running organizations and never gets to the, never gets to the people. It never gets to the people that need it. Mm. Are any changes being made under the, under the new administration in Washington? Uh, very little. And uh, like everybody else is looking for a new, something new ch change. and. Uh, uh, the only president I know that has done some good uh, was, um, oddly enough, President Nixon. And uh, uh, beyond that, and much is expected of President Carter, but uh, that remains to be seen also what he's going to do. 
I understand your father was an important man with the Sioux Indians. My father is, a, all my family are politicians. Oh, yeah. And uh, we grew, I grew up with um, people coming and going, and uh, my uh, grandfather is a historian and, and uh, with all this, uh, there's a constantly people in our house, and we, the Indians, when they have uh, any kind of meeting or anything like this, salary is not important. Mm -hmm. It's how you, uh, how you treat each that. other. Okay. And that, that's important, how you relate to each other. And money is secondary, but like to, now today it's different because money is important now. <laughs> <laughs> so either, but in that time, uh, and my father is uh, 79 years old, but uh, he is still uh, teaching oh. in what we call the Lakota Indian uh, program. And he's teaching um, history, and he's teaching uh, crafts, and uh, so that the children uh, will not forget their heritage. Whereas in the uh, 1800s and uh, middle 1900s, the uh, schools were, um, the government set out a, a policy that this Indian, student, Indian students are to uh, be uh, divorced from their heritage and not to be uh, speaking their languages and uh, knowing anything about the heritage to be completely uh, divorced and learn this new society. Is this the way? That, is this the way that the things are today, where the Indians' culture is sort of? Being no, today is, it's uh, refreshingly for me. It, it's been a a, a big, uh, happy thing for me because uh, uh, students that are going back teaching are now incorporating uh, Indian culture mm -hmm. and in uh, the regular curriculum into the school system. So therefore, a lot of our Indian students that don't know how to speak our languages are now being taught. Uh, their language, taking language classes and uh, taking art classes and uh, eventually uh, we hope to uh, maintain what used to be a Sioux Nation. Do many of the other Indians that are right now, say living in this vicinity, do they still have such an elaborate outfit as you have? Do uh, they still keep up with that? The, the ones that go home and uh, there are reservation rooted, res uh, urban Indians that are reservation oriented and they go home every year like we do, like I do. We have our religious holidays, just like we celebrate Christmas and uh, Easter and all this. And in my uh, tribe, our religious holiday is uh, the first week in August, and everybody goes home, regardless from New York to California. And uh, these type of people, and uh, you have, and, and also the parents and your grandparents have a lot to do with it. If you don't, if you're an uh, orphanage, if you are orphaned or anything like this, then you lose all that. And they try to help you, but uh, it's, it's a big job. And uh, we're trying in the city now to uh, set up programs to teach uh, city Indians to p fix up all this elaborate stuff and uh, to be proud of, of what their heritage is and not to be ashamed anymore. What's life like on an Indian reservation? Indian life on a reservation, uh, the one that I experience is a, well, just like in the ghettos, it's a uh, uh, poverty and uh, a constant um, longing for, um, oh, live from day to day, just existing day to day, what you're going to eat and what you're going to wear, and uh, your lucky ones uh, get by. But, uh, is is that why many of the Indians try to strive to get off the reservation and come back into the outside civilization? A lot of Indians want to get off. A lot of them want to get off, but uh, they don't. They're not equipped. And I worked at uh, in Denver for eight years for the Bureau of Indian Affairs uh, in trying to. Uh, they were relocating Indians off the reservation into large cities. And when Indians come into the large cities, they're not. Uh, first of all, they're not uh, acquainted with time. Time to an Indian is any time. You, you don't have to be there at 8 o'clock. You can be mm -hmm. there at 10, 12, whenever you feel like it. And money. And so my job was to uh, uh, make sure that they got to work at 8 o'clock and make sure that uh, they got money saved up for groceries for the week and then also help the ladies uh, do their shopping and uh, 
uh, work up uh, menus for them for nutritious meals for the children. Why did you come back? Why did you come to the East Coast in the first place? Well, my husband's been um, been in the ministry and has uh, accepted a position here in Lipin, and that's why we moved up here. Oh, is that why? Is that I got that's that's not when you came off the reservation, though. No, I came off the reservation uh, when I got married. Oh, oh. How did you meet your husband? If you were in the reservation, he was. Ah, uh, that's a long story, but I'll make it real short. Um, my husband is from, originally from Allentown, Pennsylvania, and uh, he was in the Explorer Group in, in Boy Scouts. So uh, uh, when graduation time came, they gave him money, and so he hitched, he hitched hike out to <laughs> South Dakota and uh, wanted to see how Indians really live. And uh, my father is a public relations man for the tribe. So he was introduced to him, and from there I met him. And uh, five years later, I have two brothers. Uh, which they've passed on since. But uh, through them, I met him, and uh, five years later, we decided uh, we liked each other and got married. <laughs> <laughs> how, is, how have you personally assimilated into the, the culture of New Jersey? Uh, it's, it's hard. Uh, sometimes, some days I'm really in, you know, I'm, I'm all for everything. And then some days, like Sunday, I really had a blue day. I was all Miss Indian. I want to be, I want to even get out of the house. But it, it took a while. Uh, I was very uh, shy, and I thought everybody was looking at me, picking up, you know, who was an Indian, you know, who was the feathers and all these things. Well, were you wearing the Indian dress? In the no, I wasn't, but uh, when I was going to school, they'll put you up in front of the classroom mm -hmm. and, you know, to learn English. Mm -hmm. And you have to say, say a sentence and then write it on a blackboard. And then if you did it wrong, everybody ha 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 laugh. And right. that makes you so inferior. That's right. It's, it's and terrible. so uh, yes. I got this inferior feeling, and then naturally, uh, whenever there's a, a, a group of people like the Indians or any place, uh, there's a discrimination, and there's discrimination back there, and uh, so there's places where Indians are not allowed to go in restaurants and stores. Still? So, uh, today there is some places, yes, but since the uh, wounded knee episode, things have changed a little bit, but. Uh, with that background, uh, I was afraid to even, uh, with my husband going to a restaurant uh, when we first got married to eat, because I felt like I wasn't welcome. In mm -hmm. I wasn't good enough to go in, in the store. Do you find any anything like that here in New Jersey? No. Uh, yeah. It's been a... The thing here in New Jersey is um, people are not... I don't know what they make of Indians, as long as I'm not dressed like this. Right. I'm in street clothes. People think I'm an Oriental or a Hispanic or something, right. never. They don't realize, yeah. And one lady asked me, she said, when you're going down the street, uh, what, what's the reaction of the people? So I said, nothing. They don't, they don't think anything. I'm just right. another person coming down the street. Right. And unless I have all this garb on, then well, there goes an Indian. Yeah. Right, like when we were yeah. we walked outside right. a little bit earlier. But right. beyond that, uh, there's, there's, there's no difference. That's really quite nice, everything you have on there. It's a pity that it's not in color, because you could really appreciate all the colors that are there. Thank you. We've brought some stuff over here, and we're going to move on over. These are some of the things. Well, let's, let's just go through these and take a look at them individually. Uh, what I brought here was since uh, the American Indian world is such a big world, and uh, I tried to bring in little things that would try to uh, bring in Oh. Uh, you can come on around over in, here. Introduce the, um, let's, I want to do, do this. <laughs> this blanket is uh, a woven blanket uh, that's done by the uh, Southwestern Indians, mostly the Navajo Indians. So that's there in the, the pottery. Uh, this, uh, I want people to know the, uh, the artistic work that the American Indians do without even, uh, making a design on a paper or anything from just from uh, their minds to just sit down and do it. And this is a turkey that was made by the Indian lady and she had no previous design to sit and then copy. She just did it by, you just know, went up and did yeah. It. And, uh, and same as with this blanket and, and the potteries that are made, you know, these are, this is uh, a San Domingo a pottery and uh, they put, uh, naturally put, put Water in it. Now, are these, are both of these pieces of pottery, are these both from the Sioux Indian? No, these are Southwestern Indian. Southwestern? These are Pueblo, Pueblo um, Indian uh, uh, pottery. 
Is there much of a difference between the, um, the pottery and the things that the different Indians of the different lands make? Yes. There's designs, it, 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 the different designs in here and different designs, and everything has different meanings to it. And uh, it's like if I went to a powwow and I, I, pu I pull up and uh, there's maybe 10 people in there and they're all different tribes, you could pick out who's a Sioux and who's a Mohawk and who's a Iroquois just like that because of their, the way they're dressed or the way their designs are. Are most of the Indians familiar with the different patterns? Like, can you tell, could you tell personally, just by looking at this, that this is from the southwestern Indians? Yes. Mm. How, what, what type of distinguishing features are there on that design? Well, there's the uh, um, uh, San Amigo uh, Pueblos are known for this. Mm -hmm. And uh, their designs are for, uh, the, to their gods. And so there, there's always something in uh, to do with their god. And, uh, to protect them and protect the water or whatever food they're going to put in here. How about this turkey over here? Well, that turkey is a, an Akama, um, uh Pueblo. Yeah. And uh, the design, can you tell? It's the same type design, I guess, through here. So. Yeah, that's, they're both Pueblos, right. but the design is different. This is a different uh, Pueblo, the kind of Pueblo that made, made the design on here. And it's really nothing. It's just a... Uh, knick-knack, whatever you want to call it, just, uh, you know, to decorate the table up or whatever. Is that what you called your prized possession a little earlier? This is my it's, it's prize. ancient, it's yeah. Go, yeah, this is, uh, because it's done by hand, it's not done by any machine or anything, and the way she did it, it's perfect. And, That's right, uh, yeah. It's beautiful. And uh, I, I priced them in the, in the stores in Denver, and they were out fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's this over here now? Now this uh, shield is just like uh, our, uh, the uh, societies we know as uh, here in uh, like the Kiwanis and the Lions Club. The uh, Indians also had uh, societies in the tribe and uh, this belonged to the Buffalo uh, Society. And uh, when they went to uh, war or hunt, they would take the shield. And this bag part here is uh, rawhide and it's been um, uh, shrunk by close, holding it close to the fire, and it shrunk so hard that uh, the, the uh, arrow is not supposed to pierce it, and then it's uh, sewed over with a uh, deer skin. And uh, when they went, to, and then each eagle feather would represent a, ma a major war that they went to. And uh, I lost a couple of feathers, but these are. But uh, this is a, a shield of a society, and. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different uh, societies, you know, and uh, so I always explain, this is about the closest I could explain it to, but uh, that, this is a museum piece, really. I shouldn't be uh, taking it around because it's, it's very, very old, and uh, I don't know what my father would think. You know, <laughs> he sees me carrying all this stuff. How did you acquire all these things here? All these, uh, some I made, and uh, some were handed down to me by my parents. Right. Every time I go home, every summer I go home, I uh, I get a, a gift from my father. So I got this blanket one year and pipe one year and, you know, certain things. Certain years I make. Is your father still on the reservation in South Dakota? Yes, he lives on the reservation. And my mother. Let's take a look at this here. This is really... This is made for a child, a girl, and this is made out of wood, and it's a willow. It was mine is made out of bones and it's heavy and uh, sometimes we have to dress up and stay dressed like this all day and the children get tired so my father made this for my daughters when they were small uh, and it's called a bone necklace but this is a willow necklace and a bone necklace. How did they get the bones on this necklace right here so regularly shaped? They're, they're, all, they're the older men have a lot of time so they just do all this type of uh, work of uh, shaping bones and uh, teaching children. All the discipline is done by by the grandparents and the mother and father are uh, uh, keeping the house keeping the uh, household going, while the uh, grandparents and the, um, the grandparents do the disciplining and training. Well, this is this is heavy. It doesn't really look it. But it's, it's kind of hairy compared to Yeah, this pipe. is a... Uh, That's a pipe, right? This is a p peace pipe. And uh, this 
the three animals that are on here, the deer, the bighorn sheep, and the uh, buffalo, uh, I belong to the Plains tribe, and these were the uh, major animals that uh, contributed to our life, uh, of giving their life and giving us the uh, uh, food and our clothing. Now these are from the Sioux yes, Indians? Yes, this is a Sioux, Sioux, Sioux Indian pipe. What type of tobacco did they use in the pipe? Uh, this regular tobacco? It's Kinnikinnik, and I brought some of it here. Oh. And as you know, how modern we Indians are getting, we're, we're getting it from the American Indian Tobacco Company up in upstate New York. But it's a mixture, and uh, my tribe makes it with another uh, leaf, a tree leaf, and then, uh, then this has been smoked recently. Oh. Do, you, do you still, do you personally smoke that at all? Or? Women do not Don't smoke, smoke. Oh. they just <laughs> pass it on, pass but, it on. Uh, no. but the men smoke it. Now we were talking about this a little bit earlier, right here. This is kind of interesting, if I can get it up. In those days, uh, we were nomadic people, and we traveled a lot, and so we had to uh, gather our food early in, in June and July, and this is uh, wild choke cherries, and it's... That's food. Yeah, it's pounded and it's dried, and uh, it's eaten like this, or it could be put in water and made, a, made into a pudding. Yeah, this is, it doesn't really look like food, if we can, yeah. I used to refer to a hamburger patties because uh, when they're fresh, they look, but these are year old now. And uh, I'm trying to hide it from my children because they, they love it, it, yeah. They just eat it like yeah. a snack. Do they sell anything like that in New Jersey now, or? Yeah, at this uh, powwow every year yeah. in September, this, uh, um, Is that made by the Indians or by a firm? Yes. The grandmother makes it. And these are wild turnips, and these are gathered in late May. Those are turnips? Mm hmm Late May. Gosh. Late May, and I've got a long row. Uh, and it's the children's job to uh, go out and ga gather all these uh, turnips. And the first day, we usually just gather turnips and eat them, and the second day, we start collecting for them. Now, what did you say these are used for? Uh, just, just, just. No, the turn the turnip, the dried meat and corn, and it makes a, a, a stew. We make a stew out of that. Why do the Indians dry their meat so often and all their foods? Because uh, we don't have refrigeration and we have to carry. We yeah, have to we travel a lot. That, yeah. we travel a lot. And this is let's take a look at this. So there's so many things it's hard to decide. I think this dress would be interesting. Yeah. This uh, blue. That one, yeah, right. Uh, this dress was made around uh, around 1885, 95, and because it's made with the Indian uh, type of uh, thread, it's called sinew. And uh, as you can see, the uh, design. This is made by grandmother, and grandmother makes all the designs, and then the daughter fills in the uh, uh, solid parts. But it's made like that, and that's why it's lasted. It has lasted. You can see the stitching inside of this, and this also should be uh, in, a, in a museum piece. Now this has been yeah. my mother's, and uh, my grandmother's, my mother's, myself, and now my daughter's. It's really fine. It's a fine piece of workmanship. Really, it's when you look at it, you can really appreciate them. Now this uh, little dress uh, weighs about eight to yeah. five pounds. That's and, leather, right? Yeah, and uh, a lady's dress in this uh, particular style weighs about 25 pounds. Hmm. And so we usually don't... Uh, you must be getting way down there. Yeah, on that. and <laughs> when you're wearing that and a necklace like mine pulling you down, it's not very comfortable. Well, this we didn't talk about earlier. What's in here? <laughs> this is food Surprises. also. Oh, okay. uh, This is something like beef jerky you buy at the store. Only this is done, it's made in bigger pieces. And we uh, dry the food, meat like this. And that's, uh, that's actually meat? Yeah, this is beef. And uh, how, how thick was that beef before it was dried like that? This is like a roast. That's and a whole roast? Yeah. And you just take <laughs> a knife and just, you know, thin it out. And then they have, they make long strips and hang it out in oh, the I sun. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hang it out in the sun and then uh, put it away for the winter or yeah. whatever. How long you can keep it? Since there's no refrigeration. These, these moccasins are really another piece of fine workmanship. The moccasins, be, the difference between a man's moccasin and a lady's moccasins are, uh, here is a typical one. This is 
because the man's moccasins, where you see the pyramid going up, and the ladies' moccasins do not have that. They just have the straight, like mine, straight uh, run through. And this, this, this is all these designs tell stories, and this is very quickly a story of a man that went on a vision quest. Uh, there was death in a family, and he went up to the mountains, and it calls the different <laughs> times that he went up there. And the result is I interpreted in these, if it was a good, good, uh, good design, uh, yeah. or if it was a good, re you know, uh, if the person got well, or if it just for death, that he was mourning for death, he would go up to the mountains. And, uh, could, a, could a common Indian, I mean, a regular Indian, just take a look at this and, and, and find out the story that's behind it? Uh, are you saying a regular Indian? Yeah, I mean, what I mean is that would an Indian need special training to be able to realize this? Yeah, no. Uh, any Indian, it's instilled in them. It, right. it, this is just like... It's what you learn. It, you, know right. it, you know it by heart. You just, you know, it's something that's in your... You, you, you know it and that's... <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mrs. Well, thank you. Dana. I'm really sorry, but we're out of time right now. You can see the fantastic stuff that's behind me. I'm Jason Klein. This has been MHS Forum. Forum's production of the students of Morristown High School organized as Morristown Educational Television and WJSV News. I'd like